today's video, I'm going to talk about a very rare disease or a syndrome. So yes, I'm talking about Sjogren's syndrome. So if you are suffering from Sjogren's syndrome, then this video is definitely for you. So watch this video till end for more knowledge and stay connected with us for more informative videos like this. So let's talk about Sjogren's syndrome. So Sjogren's syndrome is a disorder of your immune system which is identified by its two most common symptoms that is dry eyes and dry mouth. The condition often accompanies other immune system disorders such as rheumatoid arthritis and lupus erythematous, systemic lu lupus erythematous that is SLE. In Sjogren's syndrome, the mucous membrane and moisture secreting gland of your eyes and the mouth are usually affected first and hence resulting in decreased tear and saliva. Although you can develop Sjogren's syndrome at any age, but most people are older than 40 at the time of diagnosis. And the condition is much more prevalent in the women's. Now next we'll talk about the clinical features of Sjogren's syndrome. So let's talk about it. The two main symptoms of Sjogren's syndromes are dry eyes and dry mouth. So your eyes might burn, itch or feel gritty as if there is a sand in them. When we talk about dry mouth, so your mouth might feel like it's full of cotton making it difficult to swallow or speak. And some people with the Sjogren's syndrome also have one or more of the, more of the following symptoms that is joint pain, swelling and stiffness, swollen salivary glands, particularly the set located behind your jaw and in front of your ears skin rashes or dry skin, vaginal dryness, persistent dry cough and prolonged fatigue. So these are the clinical features of Sjogren's syndrome. Now next we'll talk about the most potential causes which are responsible for Sjogren's syndrome. So as I've already said, it is an autoimmune disorder. So your immune system mistakenly, so your immune system mistakenly attacks your body's, your body's own cell and tissues. Some scientists are not certain why some people develop Sjogren's syndrome and certain genes put people at a higher risk of this, this disorder. But it appears that a triggering mechanism such as infection with a particular virus or strain of bacteria is also necessary. The Sjogren's syndrome. In Sjogren's syndrome, your immune system first targets the gland that makes tears and saliva, but it can also damage other parts of your body like joints, thyroid, kidney, liver, lungs, skin and nerves. Now next we'll talk about the risk factors of Sjogren's syndrome. So first is age. So it is usually diagnosed in people older than 40 years and it is more prevalent in women as compared to males. And in the person who is having rheumatic diseases, it is common for the people who have Sjogren's syndrome to have a rheumatic disease such as rheumatoid arthritis and SLE. Now next we'll talk about the complications of Sjogren's syndrome. So first complication is dental cavities. Because saliva helps protect the teeth from bacteria that causes cavities, so you are more prone to develop cavities if, you, if your mouth is dry. Next complication is yeast infection. So people with a Sjogren syndrome are much more likely to develop oral thrush and a yeast infection in the mouth. Next is vision problem. So dry eyes can lead to light sensitivity, blurred vision and corneal damage. Unless most common complications might affect lungs, kidney, liver, lymph nodes and nerves. Now next we'll talk about the diagnosis. So let's talk about the investigations. So Sjogren's syndrome can be difficult to diagnose but the signs and symptoms vary from person to person and can be similar to those caused by other diseases. Side effects of a number of medic medications also mimic some signs and symptoms of Sjogren's syndrome. Now next we'll talk about the diagnostic criteria for the Sjogren's syndrome. So first is dry eyes. If a person is having dry eyes more, for more than three months and sensation of sand or gravels in the eyes or use of tear substitutes that is more than three per day indicates toward Sjogren's syndrome. Next is dry month for more than three months, recurrent and persistent swollen salivary glands and frequent drinking of liquid to aid up in swallowing dry, food, dry foods. Next is Schirmer test. If it is less than 5 mm in one min 5 minute, or another test is Rose Bengal score that is more than 4, so it indicates Sjogren's syndrome. Next, more than 50 mononuclear cells in the glandular tissues, they indicate Sjogren's syndrome. And next criteria is abnormal salivary, skintography or parotid 
sialography or unstimulated salivary flow that is less than 1.5 ml in 15 minutes and last criteria is presence of ntro oblique ssa ntla oblique ssp anti nuclear antibodies or rheumatoid factors so these are the diagnostic criteria for the sjogren syndrome and now we will talk about some test first we have is blood test so your so your doctor might order blood test to check for levels of different types of blood cells presence of antibodies which are common in sjogren syndrome evidence of inflammatory conditions indication of problems with your liver and kidneys next test is imaging so certain imaging test can check the function of your salivary glands like sialogram this special x-ray can de can detect dye that is injected into the salivary glands in front of your ears this procedure shows how much saliva flows into your mouth next is salivary scintigraphy this nuclear medicine test involves the injection into the vein of your radioactive isotope which is tracked which is tracked over an hour to see how quickly it arrives in all your salivary glands and last test is biopsy so your doctor might also do a lip biopsy to detect the presence of clusters of inflammatory cells which can indicate sjogren syndrome for this test a silver of tissue is removed from salivary glands in your lip and examined under a microscope so these are the various investigations and diagnoses which one can perform in order to diagnose sjogren syndrome Now next we'll talk about the treatment. So what is the ultimate treatment for the Sjogren syndrome? So yes we are talking about homeopathic treatment. Now we will talk about the homeopathic medicines which can be used for the treatment of Sjogren syndrome. So Sjogren syndrome can be treated safely and effectively with the use of homeopathic medicines. As homeopathic medicines treat Sjogren syndrome by moderating the overactive immune system. and the homeopathic medicines for the sjogren syndromes are selected by taking into consideration the part affected and the characteristics in every individual case and homeopathic prescriptions need a complete case analysis and evaluation of the case so these medicines should be used under the supervision of a qualified homeopathic physician in person now let's talk about the homeopathic medicines for the sjogren syndrome so first and the foremost medicine that you can see here on the screen for the sjogren syndrome is nux moschata so it is a very excellent homeopathic medicine for the dry mouth in sjogren syndrome let's talk about it so people who need nux moschata have an intensively dry mouth the dryness is so marked that the tongue sticks to the root of a roof of a mouth The dryness of the mouth is most experienced while sleeping. A peculiar symptom is a lack of thirst in spite of dry mouth. A bad smell from the mouth may be present. The lips are also dry. The dryness may extend extend to the throat from mouth. Next medicine for Sjogren syndrome is belladonna. So this medicine is used for managing dry eyes in Sjogren syndrome. So let's talk about it. So belladonna is helpful for managing dry eyes along with the dryness in the eyes also appear red itching in the eyes may be present in some cases a burning smarting and stinging sensation in the eyes is present sand like gritty sensation in the eyes along with all the symptoms may be present next medicine is rustox so rustox is a very effective homeopathic medicine to cure for joint pains in cases of sjogren syndrome People needing Rustox experience pain, swelling, redness, heat in the joint with a marked stiffness. Stiffness, crackling on stretching the joint also appear. They may feel better by warm applications. And for using Rustox, a characteristic feature is a joint pain that get worse during rest and better by motion. Next medicine is arsenic alum. So it is a very wonderful homeopathic medicine for the Sjogren syndrome where the person experiences extreme fatigue. Weariness and weakness prevails all the time. An intense fatigue makes a person want to lie down constantly. The slightest exertion can cause fatigue and there may be anxiety and restlessness. Restlessness. Now the next medicine for Sjogren syndrome is Bryonia alba. So this is a very wonderful homeopathic medicine for the dry cough in Sjogren syndrome. So let's talk about it. So people needing Bryonia have a dry spasmodic type of cough, a tickling sensation in the throat may be present along with the cough. The cough may worsen after eating and drinking. Vomiting may occur along with cough. Pain in the head and chest appear with the cough. And apart from all these symptoms, there is a dryness of the mouth and crackling of the lips may be present. Joint pains that are worse from motion and better by rest is another prominent attending symptom, which indicate towards Bryonia alba. Now, our next homeopathic medicine for Sjogren syndrome is sulfur. 
So sulfur is a natural homeopathic medicine for dry and itchy skin in the Sjogren syndrome. The itching may be localized or widespread all over the body. Intense itching is present and scratching the skin causes a burning sensation. The itchy spots may also become painful after scratching. Now the last medicine. Now the last medicine for Sjogren syndrome is sepia. So sepia is a very effective homeopathic medicine for vaginal dryness in Sjogren syndrome and women needing sepia may experience itching in the vagina along with the dryness. They also complain of painful intercourses from extreme dryness of the vagina. So these are the homeopathic medicines which has been used for the treatment of Sjogren syndrome. So that's all for today. If you find this video informative, helpful and especially valuable, so please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell for more insights into the world of homeopathy and natural healing. So thank you so much for joining me on this exploration of Sjogren syndrome and its, and its treatment with the homeopathic medicines. So take care. See you guys in the next video. Till then stay safe and stay healthy. And if you are suffering from any of the health issues, you can contact us for online appointments. On the screen, you can see how to contact us. So that's it for now. And thank you so much for watching this video.